Hi, this is Nick in 3 wg and I'm going to give a quick demo of a product I've been working on. It's an addition to the Hamlog application on iOS, on iPhone and iPad, uh, which I wrote uh, about three years ago now, in March 2009. Uh, so what we have here, uh, we have an iPad, K3, power supply, another power supply. So this is charging or powering the K3. That power supply is powering this little device here uh, that I'm going to call a pigtail. And uh, you can see it's got a 9 volt connector there, a uh, DB9 serial port, LED housing, there's no LED in there yet, and a switch just to turn it on and off. Now, I'm not set on this enclosure, but um, it all fits in there right now. So let's show what this thing can do. So the uh, the pigtail runs um, runs on Wi-Fi. Uh, it can do ad hoc or uh, your standard infrastructure mode. So uh, I had several requests in the past to create some sort of device to get data automatically into Hamlog. So for example, if we're adding a contact here, uh, frequency and mode has to be typed in. Uh, it is automatically set based on the previous entry, but if you were to fr uh, change frequency, then you have to type all that information in. So that can be kind of annoying. And if you're in a situation where you have to, um, say you're in a pileup on a de-expedition or something like that, uh, and you have to type quickly, having to type in a frequency and change mode um, can take a lot of time. So um, based on those requests, I started working on this device. And uh, so let's take a look at what we have here. So if I jump into settings, Actually, I think you couldn't see that frequency in mode a second ago. Alright, so if we look at Wi-Fi, <clears throat> we can see that we're connected to this device, Pigtail-34. And this is an ad hoc network, so there's no need for a wireless access point or anything like that. It's just iPad talking straight to the Pigtail device. Uh, we are connected. Uh, statically set this IP, but it uses a PIPA addressing. Uh, so this can um, be fully dynamic. Alright, so let's start up Hamlog. And there's a new tool down here now called Pigtail Air. And this little device, it sort of pings itself out as being available every 8 seconds or so. So you can see one just popped up here. I selected it. That sort of uh, tells Hamlog that's what you want to use. And then when I go to add a new contact, you can see that this little icon popped up saying that we're connected to the uh, to the pigtail alright so I just rebooted the uh, the K3 there's some sort of issue I have to work out where um, if the K3 is already on and then you connect it it doesn't always uh, immediately get grab the information so you can see the uh, frequency and mode uh, is populated there and that came directly from the K3. If we look at it down here, it's at 5 megahertz. If we go up to say 7 megahertz CW, uh, you can see that it changed up in the uh, in Hamlog. So let me uh, run through these again. So there's <clears throat> 30 meters and change the mode, sideband. Oops. FM, etc. Also, um, rotating the the VFO knob, you can see that the uh, frequency is incrementing. I have it set; um, it's about a second per query uh, to grab information. So that's why that little delay is there. I have tried it half a second, and it works just fine. I just slowed it down just because I don't need to uh, to do it so quick. So something else to show you, there's this new button down here, Pigtail. If we click on that, you can see this little window popped up. And it's in the way, so this is draggable. Let's put it down here. So if we were to pull up the keyboard, um, normally it looks like this, which is in the way. But uh, with this split mode in newer versions of iOS, uh, you can fit everything on the screen. If I zoom in on that new window, 
You can see there's a whole bunch of buttons there. Oh, one other thing to note, uh, whenever you select the pigtail um, in that tool, pigtail air tool, uh, there were several radios listed there, Ellacraft, Yesu, Icom, and Kenwood. Uh, Ellacraft is the only one I've played with so far. Um, I haven't started any code for the other radios. So all these buttons do what you would expect. For example, if I click on 50, you can hear the, the radio click there. And we're down, down at, or up at six meters. And then you can increment the VFO with these buttons here. Or you can set, let's see, let's go to 3888 set. Also, there's another small bug here. These buttons are kind of hard to get right as far as clicking, but they do work. So I just changed down to 80 meters. Uh, we can also change modes here. So if we go LSB, uh, also um, notice that it is still changing up top as we click down here. So if I go to 30 meters, we're at 10 megahertz in CW. Uh, also, if I put it on test, because I don't have a, a dummy load here, uh, you can see that it does switch between TX norm and TX test. So let's go back to test, and I'm on 30 meters CW. And if I click on M1, It'll send that memory or whatever happens to be in there. Now we can change the code speed from here as well. This is another one of those button issues. And we can also send CW directly from here. Uh, all the rest of these buttons work. Um, however, uh, you'll notice if I hit uh, NB, it does, you do hear the radio beep in there, but this is a momentary switch. I want to make this a toggle so that this is intelligent enough to know whether or not that's turned on. Uh, saying all these buttons are, are momentary, but we can switch antennas. Let's see if I can show both. Switch antennas. A, B, N, B, and R. Turn on the tuner or not. Preamp. And the AGC speed. So that's where it stands right now. Um, as I said, just a quick demo. Uh, the other radios aren't done yet, and also iPhones are not done, but it will be. Uh, it won't be. It won't look like this, of course, just because the screen's a lot smaller. It'll probably be some sort of pop-over view uh, with all the buttons there. But um, currently, I only have this single device working. Uh, the first assembled prototype is being made, I believe, next week, and I should have some um, some ready to go in the next month or two. So. Um, in, uh, in the email, I'll probably put a link to a uh, uh, an interest form so I can gauge how many people might want one so I know how many to get made. So uh, let me know what you think. Thanks. Bye.